this I just want to show the um, Ajax routes in action um, after that epically bad video or demo this morning. So here's when we load the page. Um, we have this table that we're about to create. So let's add something to it. So new product has a description. This is a new product. And it's going to have a price at like $12.99. All right, so there it is. Um, table's popping up with the name in the right place, the description in the right place, the price in the right place. And if we want to edit it, it brings up a new form. And we can say um, less new product because it's now not as new. And if we update it, it now changes the name there as appropriate. So again, we could show it, and it will show which product we're showing, and we can delete it. All right. So again, these fields should clear out on the delete, but they don't. Not a big deal. Um, if I were to refresh the page, they'd all be cleared out. So let's do this again just to make another product. It's another product. OK. So the next thing I want to do is just take you through the code. Um, do this. So, again, show it. If we wanted to create a new one, we could do that. Um, exactly. Excellent. All right. So, let me make the screen bigger over here. And I'm going to just take you through one of the routes. So, um, maybe two of the routes. All right. So, let's start off with. Um, this idea of going to the root route and what gets loaded. So it goes off and we run nothing. So when we go to the root route, it then runs this real index method. So if then we go to views and we look at the real index method, all that view is doing is going and running this index.html. Great. So pretty standard. That just loads as index.html. Awesome. All right, here's that index.html. Ignore all this stuff for now. So ignore the stuff that I'm about to, to have in here. We're going to talk about one of those things in just a second. All right. What it does is it basically just has these, this chunk of HTML plus a lot of JavaScript. Okay. But notice that this index and this show, or this new form, were already populated. All right. So how did they get populated? And that's what the next thing we wanted to talk about. So we know what they are going to be in there. So this index.html is going to be what's populating that one, the index chunk of it. And the new form is what's going to populate the second piece. So when we load our page, those are the two HTML chunks. So that's this is the index chunk here. And this is the new form chunk here. So those things are intact already. And so what happened and how did we get them onto there? And so Obviously, you could have just ran and run, rendered a new page and shown index independently of this form. Um, totally fine, and that's kind of what the original RESTful assignment has you doing. In this case, we have them all on the same page. And so we got there by using JavaScript. So here's the JavaScript to do that, and I'm just going to point out one of them to start with. So going to our index.html. All right. Here is a function that makes an Ajax request. All right. What this Ajax request does, what it says is, hey, go to products, just like you'd be typing it in in the main screen. And when you go to products, that's going to go to a URL, and that URL is going to get picked up. When it gets picked up, it's basically going to, going to do what it would normally do. So it goes to products. It goes to this index create method. So if we look at our views on our index to create method, that request method was a git. So you can see that in that Ajax call. And it returns and renders this index2.html after it goes and gets all the products. And so it returns all of that. All right, so that's actually what comes back right here. This big, big variable name, that's what comes back. And when it comes back, we can then use jQuery to add it to that div called index. So that's all that happened there. All right, so let's look at a form that we're going to submit. And so we can load the new product form exactly the same way. I forgot to put a success in here at one point. So um, 
that's this is the loading the form. So I'm not going to go over that because that's exactly the same thing that just happened there. Basically, we went to products new, products new ran that URL. That URL returned some data from the controller, and then we said, hey jQuery, add that data into this HTML file. Fantastic. All right. So now let's say let's look at that index or that new form, and this is the create method. So this new form. All right. Here's what it's got. It does, it's not even a form. It's a fake form. I just made it kind of look like a form. It has input fields that have IDs, new name, new description, and new price, and a button associated with it called create. Now, when we click this create button, I told JavaScript to say, when you click on a class create, go and run this create method. So it says, document on click. If it's a class create, run create. So if we go back up and see what that create method does, guess what it's going to do? It's going to run a jQuery method. All right, so here's that jQuery method. So, or that Ajax method, I apologize. So it goes URL products. It goes over as a post this time. It sends that CSRF middleware token, just like you would with a normal post. And then we pass in three different pieces of information. The name, getting from the input field that has an idea of new name. The description, getting the data that we put into the input field new description, and the price getting sent over from the input field called new price. Those three things come over just like they would with a normal form submission. When we get stuff back, we don't do anything with that data. We just run that index method to update our index. So basically change that, that field that we've already created. So again, this thing comes over to URL posts, products as a post. So we go to URLs, hits products. It has to choose between index and create. So if we go to the views, well, if it's a get, it's an index. If it's a post, it's a create. So it's a post. So then we do, so do products, objects, create, and we just take that request.post and set the key value pairs as appropriate. Name is request.post name, description is request.post description, and price, because we specified this field as a decimal type field, we have to convert this number that we type into price to a number because it comes over as a string. And so remember, Python does do some typecasting. It doesn't automatically convert things for us like JavaScript can. So we have to convert it into a decimal type string or a decimal type um, number. So just putting float in front of that, we'll convert it. And that's all that happened. And so, um, so that's pretty much it. So that's basically how these AJAX requests work. Um, and I apologize for this morning being such a mess. Um, but basically, if we look at back at that, those AJAX requests, these are the two key pieces. You guys have already done this. So whenever you type in a URL, into your like browser, that's going to be basically a get request. So it would be products slash get if you typed it in. It then sends stuff back and HTML automatically renders it if you've typed it in. But with Ajax, all we're saying is, hey, just get that data back and then do something when you get that data back. That you could use that data or you could not use that data. And that's kind of the only adjustment that you have to make as long as you got this syntax correct. So. Um, as I said, I'll post this up um, so you guys can play with it, take a look at it, um, and hopefully that's a little bit clearer. So again, sorry about this morning, and um, if it's not clear, just grab somebody next to you and be like, hey, so how does this piece work? Um, how does that other piece work? Awesome.